Hello guys, I hope you all are doing good. I am Vishali Kikan and we are discussing the electronics engineering. Today this is a yet again session on the numerical practice on the applications of the diode. We have already understood various applications of the diode in our theory classes where we discussed about the half wave rectifier, full wave rectifier, bridge rectifier, clipper, clamper, voltage multiplier and the Zener diode as a shunt regulator. Now we are proceeding towards the application of the theory classes, we are moving towards the practice of the questions. If you have still not watched the theory classes, it is highly recommended go back, watch the theory videos first and then come to this video. So the first question for the day is a full wave rectifier has a center tap transformer of 50, 0, 50 volt and each one of the diode is rated at I max is equal to 20 milliampere and I average is equal to 75 milliampere. Neglecting voltage drop across the diode find out the following. The value of uh, load resistor that gives the largest DC power, DC load voltage and current and at last PIB of each diode. Right, so we know for the normal operation the maximum value of current flowing through the diode must not exceed 80% of the rated current otherwise there is a problem that diode can get damaged due to the excessive current and the heat produced by it right so the i max can be calculated as so i max here it is given uh, let's take it 200 milliampere so what would be my i m i m will be equal to 0 0.8 times the i max right this is my peak value of the current if it is exceeding this value, the device will get damaged. So, I am taking the maximum value to be this value only. Right. So, we can put the value of I max. So, it will be 0 0.8 into 200 milliampere. Right. So, it will be equal to 160 milliampere. So, now I have found out the peak value of the current. Right. So, now uh, we can find out the Vm. The peak value of voltage so with the help of the rating of the transformer which is given as 50 0 50 volt uh, we can find out the peak value so peak value will be related to the rms value as under root 2 into the rms value so we will be having under root 2 into 50 which is 1.41 into 50 and when you compute it you will be getting 70.5 volt Right, now I have Vm, I have Im. Now we can find out the load resistance. So uh, this is our A part. We have to find out the load resistance. Rl will be equal to Vm upon Im by the simply Ohm's law. So we are going to put the value 70.5 upon 160 into 10 raised to power minus 3. Right, so when you compute it, so it will be coming out to be equal to 221 ohm right so you can take this 10 raised to power minus 3 in the numerator it will be equal to 70500 when you divide it with 160 you are going to get 221 ohm this is my load resistance right so now uh, we will proceed to the next part where we need to find out the vdc i know vm i can find out the vdc by the formula 2 vm upon pi Right, so let's put the value of Vm. So it will be equal to 2 upon pi into Vm. What is Vm? We have calculated it to be equal to 70.5. So when you calculate it with the help of Vm, the output will be equal to 45 volt. Right, so now uh, moving on towards the next part, we have calculated Vdc. Now calculation of Idc we can do with the help of Ohm's law again, Vdc upon rl will be equal to idc so 45 upon rl which is 221 is equal to idc you can calculate it it will be equal to 0 0.204 ampere now moving on to the peak inverse voltage so piv is equal to 2 into vm now we know vm we can put it over here so it will be equal to 2 into 70.5 and it will be equal to 143 volt. Right, so we have calculated all of the parameters that was asked in the question. Right, so now moving on to the next question. Uh, it states the negative 
series clipper is shown in figure. What is the peak output voltage from the circuit? Assume the diode is ideal. Right, so here uh, the input voltage is having the peak at 15 and the minus peak at minus 15. So we have a diode and a load resistance and around the load resistance I am, I am taking the V output. Right. So when the diode is connected in series with the load, right? So you can see this is a series connection of the diode with the load. We have this uh, type of clipper to be called as series clipper, right? As it is stated in the question itself, this is a series clipper because it is a negative clipper. We all know the direction of the diode is in the forward direction, right? So it is going to clip out the negative portion it is going to remove the negative portion of the input AC signal and during the positive half of the input diode is forward bias, right? So when I have the positive half, we are going to get the diode as a forward bias and it will be replaced by a short circuit. So when the diode is over here, short circuit, the V output will be equal to V in. So the maximum voltage V output is equal to V in which will be equal to 15 volt because the maximum peak voltage is 15 and we are getting uh, the V output is equal to V in only in the positive half cycle. Now during the negative half cycle, what happens during the negative half cycle? You can see the diode will become the reverse biased and diode is over here reverse biased and it will be behaving like an open circuit. There will be no current in the load resistance and because of this reason V output is equal to 0, right? Here the diode is forward bias for the positive half cycle and it will be behaving as a short circuit, right? So what kind of output we are going to get? We are going to get the output. I will be making the waveform for one cycle, right? So here it is my T and this is my V output. So V output is having the values only for 0 to pi, right? Or I can say for just half of the period when the input is positive, that time only I am going to get the V output, right? So I hope you understood this. Now moving on to the next question for the day. It states the negative shunt clipper shown in the below figure has a peak input voltage of 5 volt. What is the peak output voltage of this circuit? Right, we need to find out the peak output voltage. During the positive half cycle of the input AC signal, the diode is reverse biased. You can see when I have the positive signal over here, it is connected to the N side of the diode and it will be reverse biased. When the diode is uh, reverse biased, it will be an open circuit and the output voltage can be calculated for this case. Right, it is an open circuit and output voltage can be calculated by the voltage division law. Right, so we can apply the voltage division law and V output will be equal to RL. This is my RL upon R plus RL into V. In. So it will be equal to 2 upon 2 plus 2 into 5. Right, so it will be equal to 2.5 volt. So this is how in the, in the positive half cycle we are going to get the output but during the negative half cycle the diode will conduct. Now we are uh, seeing the second possibility in the negative half cycle. The diode is going to become forward bias right and it is going to become a short circuit. So when the diode is short circuit full current is going to pass through the least uh, resistive path. So here this path would be the least resistive path and all of the current is going to flow through this path and we are not going to get any current over this. So now I can say the output will be equal to 0. V output will be equal to 0. So now how I can make the output waveform? Again the output waveform is uh, present only for the positive half cycle. So if this is my D, this is my V out, we will be getting the V output as a peak voltage will be 2.5 volt and it will be present only for the half cycle. I hope you understood this question. Now moving on to the next question for the day. So now this question uh, states we have to sketch the IR and V output 
for the circuit which is shown in the given figure right so uh, we see the input waveform which is a triangular waveform and the circuit is having the two diodes t1 and d2 right so we know that when a diode is forward bias then vf is equal to 0.7 volt so the drop across the diodes d1 and d2 is 0.7 volt during the forward bias right so when a diode is reverse biased it behaves like an open circuit and all the voltage is going to drop across it first of all we have to see how we make the diode d1 forward biased so the voltage should be positive and 0.7 volt more than 5.3 volt so here if you see the voltage over here is 5.3 and the voltage drop across d1 is 0.7 so if i supply voltage over here which is positive than this which means it is greater than 5.3 plus 0.7 volt which is greater than 6 volt so at that time i will be having the forward biased condition right diode will become forward biased and it behaves like an open circuit and the current ir flows through the 10 kilo ohm resistor right there will be a current IR so now at this time V output becomes constant and it will be at 6 volt right so V output will be at 6 volt because the diode is forward biased and V output is parallel to it right so extra voltage of VI drop across the resistor and the maximum positive current IR will be flowing when vi is equal to 10 volt so we will be seeing what is the forward current that is flowing when i have the 10 volt as the input so let's calculate it so i r max because here in the parallel of this we will be having only the output which is uh, 6 volt if i have the extra voltage like the 10 volt which i am supplying it will be dissipated over here in the terms of extra current so the ir max will be equal to 10 volt minus 6 volt upon the resistance which is 10 kilo ohm which will be equal to 0 0.4 milliampere right so this would be my maximum current now we know the maximum current so similarly when v1 is negative diode d2 will be forward biased right so at which condition uh, the diode d2 is going to become the forward biased so when this vi is more negative because here we will be having the negative terminal right so the input voltage is 0 0.7 more negative than minus 7.3 volt so how i can represent it so to make it forward bias the vi here also i was talking about the vi or v1 you can say it is uh, less than or more negative than minus 7.3 minus 0.7 right so it will be less than minus 8 volt right so if i have the input voltage which is even lesser than minus 8 volt that time my diode will become forward bias and it is going to give me the output which is equal to minus 8 volt only right so the parallel output will be minus 8 only so now the maximum negative current will we will be calculating by assuming this condition so i r minimum will be equal to minus 10 volt plus 8 volt upon 10 k right so it will be equal to minus 0 0.2 milliampere right so now i know what is the maximum current what is the minimum current so i can uh, draw out the output voltage curve right the output voltage curve will be a clipped curve because of these uh, two clipper circuit i will be having the output waveform clipped right so in which values the output waveform is clipped 5.3 plus 0 0.7 is 6 so for the positive half cycle it is clipped at 6 volt right and for the negative half cycle it is clipped at minus 7.3 minus 0 0.7 which is minus 8 volt right
right? So here we will be having minus 8 volts. So this is how my voltage waveform is going to look like. Now let's talk about the current waveform. So current waveform, how it is going to look like? So it is present only uh, for the time when I have the voltage greater than 6 volt over here for the positive half cycle. So at the time my voltage is greater than 6 volt, let's suppose it is this range and for this range only the current would be present and it will be increasing and then decreasing. So the maximum value of current we calculated is 0 0.4 milliampere. Right. Similarly for the negative half cycle, uh, we know the current would be present for T3 to T4 where uh, the T3 and T4 is uh, minus 8. So at that time I will be having the current and which is having the maximum negative value to be equal to minus 0 0.2 ampere. This is milliampere. So this is how I can trace the current diagram. I hope you understood this. Now moving on to the next question for the day. Sketch the output waveform for the circuit shown in the figure. It is given that the discharging time is much greater than the time period for the charging. Right, so this is the waveform. We have a square waveform and we have a capacitor, a diode and a battery over here. So what happens during the positive half cycle? The diode will be forward biased, right? We can see this is the P-terminal of the diode and positive half cycle diode is forward biased. Right, so when the diode is forward biased, I can replace it with a short circuit. And uh, when we have the short circuit over here, we can apply the KVL. So we can uh, apply the KVL and we will be having the input which is constant at 10. During the positive half cycle, we have the plus 10 volt only minus the voltage developed at the capacitor minus 2 is equal to 0. Right. So how we can uh, represent it as VC will be equal to 8 volt. Right. The voltage on the capacitor is 8 volt and the capacitor is charged up to 8 volt right so this we have understood now v output will be equal to v in minus vc right so what is v in v in is 10 minus vc vc is 8 so it will be equal to 2 volt right so i hope you understood how we calculated the v output Similarly, uh, during the negative half cycle, the diode will become reverse bias. When the diode is reverse bias, it is open circuit, right? So, diode will be behaving like an open circuit and you can replace here with the open circuit. Again, we can apply the KVL and here the current will pass through this circuit because diode is open circuit. The current avoid this path and it will flow through RL path, right? So now we can apply the KVL in the bigger path and we will be having minus 10, minus 8 because the capacitor was charged by 8 volt. Now minus 10, minus 8, minus V out is equal to 0. So from here I can compute V out is equal to minus 18 volt. So now I can trace out the waveform. Right, how the waveform is going to look like? We will be having positive plus 2 volt, right? For the positive half cycle till T by 2, right? And after T by 2 to T, we will be having minus 18 volt. So this is how we will be having voltage time uh, curve or waveform. So I hope you understood this question. If you have any doubt in any of the question, you can uh, put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and also give me your feedback. Thank you.